It is a pleasure to be here today at the American Society of Functional Neuroradiology and to talk to you about artificial intelligence in traumatic brain injury. My name is Paul Perizel. I'm the David Hartley Chair of Radiology at Royal Perth Hospital and University of Western Australia. And I am the Director of the West Australian National Imaging Facility, NOAA. I bring you greetings from the beautiful city of Perth and the sunny state of Western Australia. Before starting, I have some disclosures to make. I have a long-standing collaboration with uh, Icometrics and with Wim van Hecke, who was one of my PhD students. I have been the imaging work package leader from the, for the European Center TBI project. And I have some other uh, disclosures which are probably less relevant to this presentation. As we all know, traumatic brain injury can lead to alteration in brain function caused by an external force. Examples include loss of consciousness, amnesia, neurologic deficit, mental state alteration. What happens usually in a clinical setting is that imaging is performed. And imaging has three basic goals. One, to detect injuries that may require immediate surgical or procedural intervention. Two, to detect injuries that may benefit from early medical therapy or vigilant neurologic observation. And three, importantly, to predict the outcome of patients. On the basis of imaging, we then decide on patient management, and that could be surgical, or procedural intervention, a drain, craniotomy, a de decompressive craniectomy, or could be early medical therapy, induced coma, diuretics, antiepileptics, or vigilant observation. Now, for imaging in traumatic brain injury, we usually start with CT. And CT has been well documented since several decades to have a very important role in uh, managing patients with traumatic brain injury. And there are many excellent guidelines and charts that help us to decide when CT is indicated. I give you, for example, the New Orleans uh, criteria for mild TBI, the Canadian CT head rule for mild TBI, the Nexus II. Uh, all of these have been very well documented. But what about MRI in traumatic brain injury? Well, MRI is indicated in patients with acute TBI if the neurologic findings are not explained by CT imaging. What we do with imaging is to detect all the features associated with traumatic brain injury, including fractures of the skull, skull base, or craniofacial area, assessment of extracranial, extraaxial abnormalities, I'm sorry, such as epidural, subdural, uh, subarachnoid, or intraventricular hemorrhage, assessment of intraaxial abnormalities, contusions, hemorrhage, um, diffuse axonal injury and traumatic axonal injury, assessment of mass effect, midline shift, brain herniation, cisternal compression, Assessment of secondary injuries, such as edema, infarction, hypoxia, and assessment of axonal injuries, non-hemorrhagic or hemorrhagic. As you can see in the illustration on the right side, most of these questions are addressed by doing non-contrast CT of the brain, but subtle changes in the brain parenchyma are better seen on MRI. Now, Although our techniques are quite good, we face severe challenges in neuroradiological reporting. And that is because we use different classification systems. TBI is a very heterogeneous disease. We subjectively interpret increased intracranial pressure, midline shift, cisternal compression. These are very subjective findings. And we almost never do an actual volume measurement. And yet some of the guidelines indicate that the volume, for example, of an extra axial hemorrhage 
is an important determinant in deciding whether or not to do surgery. And that means that our reporting suffers from a very large variability and even relatively simple problems such, such as uh, a midline shift have very poor kappa correlations. And that is because we all know that if you ask five neuroradiologists to assess a brain scan, you will get seven different answers when it comes to midline shifts. So we need to move towards a structured reporting system and quantification of abnormalities. The need for structured reporting has been amply described in the literature, and I took this citation from a very elegant paper published in Journal of Neurotrauma 2019, um, showing that uh, uh, structured reporting can discriminate between patients with favorable and unfavorable six-month outcomes. In addition to the structured reporting, we also need to have automated methods. Automated methods help us to improve prediction of outcomes and help us to quantify and classify structural injuries in the head injury population. And these are important findings, structured reporting and automation. Now, AI has come to the rescue and there are tools in artificial intelligence that help us to do exactly that. On the left side, you see an example of the ICO brain traumatic brain injury template developed by Icometrics. You see that uh, a few key images are displayed showing the extra axial hemorrhage, the midline shift, and then magnified on the right side of the slide, we see a detailed evaluation of the mass effect. Um, looking at the volume of, in this case, the epidural hematoma, looking at the volume of the cisterns, of the ventricles, we have an index that indicates the asymmetry of the ventricles, and we have a precise measure of the midline shift, all generated automatically without human intervention. At the same time, we can do a volumetric assessment of the whole brain, the cortical gray matter, the hippocampal structures, and we can compare that with a normal population that is age and sex controlled for these measures. Now, all of this has been made possible because of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence in and by itself is a relatively old concept. Um, almost more than half a century ago, the words artificial intelligence were coined. Um, a few decades ago, things started to get more um, accurate with machine learning, but it is really in the past decade, since more or less 2010, that deep learning has caused a paradigm shift and has led to breakthroughs that are driving the artificial intelligence boom. So if we now look at this past decade, the years basically since 2010, what we see is that there has been an almost exponential increase in computational power. The computational power of our computers has exceeded the insect brain 20 years ago, has exceeded one mouse brain 15 years ago, and is expected to exceed a human brain in less than four years time. And of course, we know that the human computational power, the human intelligence, the human performance is a constant and will not evolve in such a short time. And interestingly, artificial intelligence, when it comes to uh, the error rates, we see that the error rates of the best AI systems since a couple of years are lower than the error rates of humans. So this is a very, very promising evolution. And what is driving all of this are convolutional neural networks, which are the most common class of deep learning, allowing faster classification, reduction of variability, and thus better results in patients with traumatic brain injury. 
Now, the next challenge is obviously going to be to translate our structured reports and quantification into clinical actions. And that is what we have been struggling with for many decades. Most of us are familiar with the Helsinki uh, CT score chart or the Rotterdam scale for computed tomography. Um, a very interesting newer effort is the neuroimaging radiological interpretation system, the NIRIS, developed by Max Wintermark in Stanford in 2018, or the Brain Trauma Foundation um, indications for surgery. This is where we have to go. Can we move from simple imaging to developing guidelines on how to manage these patients uh, clinically? I'd like to finish up by showing you a clinical example in a patient with a left-sided uh, subdural hematoma. Uh, there is some midline shift. There is some cisternal compression. This is the automatically generated IcoBrain TBI report. Um, you can see the volume of the subdural is measured as 73.1 milliliters. We, you can see the volume of the cisterns, of the ventricles, and then there is um, an asymmetry index, which is uh, clear, 89%, and there's a midline shift of 9.4 millimeters. Automatically generated report. And just to give you an idea, these are the images. So the impact was right frontal. There's a contracu subdural hematoma. There's a midline shift. There's compression of the lateral ventricles. There's cisternal compression. Um, the, uh, the ambient cisterns are uh, compressed. And all of these features are highlighted on the scan, color coded, so that you can actually see what the system is looking at. And you can correct it whenever there is something that has been forgotten. The neuro, neuroimaging radiological interpretation system has a number of categories. Now, the patient that we just saw obviously is in NIRIS 4, meaning there's an extra axial hematoma, uh, which is larger than 25 cc's. There is diffuse brain herniation, midline shift. And um, what that means is that the patient management will have to consider a neurosurgical procedure. Our patient was operated with a ventricular drain and a burr hole. Um, the, uh, the subdural hematoma was drained. And these kind of patients have a relatively high risk of TBI associated death. The next step will be to predict the outcome. And we can do that using a number of scoring systems, Rotterdam, Helsinki, Marshall classification. There's a number of other parameters on these uh, outcome prediction scales, for example, interventricular hemorrhage or traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage. These are currently not yet assessed in the ICO brain, but this is uh, on the horizon and is actually work in progress. It is not much more difficult than any of the other parameters. And then, um, the surgical management of acute subdural hematomas um, can be the next step in this uh, diagram. We are not telling the surgeons what to do. The artificial intelligence is there to help. The first, second, third year resident who is on call in the middle of the night to look at this um, scan in an intelligent way and to understand the ramifications of the abnormalities identified on the scan. So in concluding, I would like to share with you that I strongly believe that AI is on the verge of really impacting patient care in TBI. And we could ask ourselves, why is this happening now? Well, there's three reasons. First of all, Artificial intelligence accuracy is meeting human performance with a higher speed and an improved consistency. So we're actually better, getting better than humans. Second, guidelines and evidence are becoming available. 
and we can match the structured AI generated reports with the quantification and you know, use this to guide us through the guidelines. And we can do so in a reproducible way in a clinical environment. One of my favorite quotes is this one. The future is here. It's just not widely distributed yet. This is by William Gibson, who's a Canadian science fiction uh, author. And with this, I would like to thank you once again. It was a pleasure to be here with you at the American Society of Functional Neuroradiology. Thank you very much for your attention. And I look forward to seeing you in the beautiful city of Perth at the University of Western Australia. Thank you very much and goodbye.